1979, Apple Computer was the first computer company to incorporate fashionable designs with their products. And this Apple IIe is a result of that. It's part of the Apple II line, and one of the key features was that it was very easy to open, uh, which made it very unique uh, because it was very accessible for consumers. In the beginning of the 80s, Apple wanted their designs to be more serious, and so they sought an external company to make the design for them. This design contest was won by a company named Frog Design, which was owned by Helmut Esslinger, and Helmut Esslinger uh, also made um, designs for Ega and Gundy and Sony, and so on. And they uh, created a unique style for computers, which was called the Snow White design. And the Snow White design is so interesting that I decided to uh, dedicate this video to the Snow White design of Apple's computers. An early example of the Snow White design is this Macintosh 2CI and has a lot of the Snow White features. Um, the most prominent feature of the Snow White design are these lines. They're both horizontal and vertical lines. And what you can see is that the air vents that it has are incorporated in the design. You see, for example, here they're open and here they're closed. Um, also, what you can see is that for example, the disk drive is very nice in the, in the recessed line in the case. You see the recessed line you see coming back right here. Um, all these lines have um, the same distance um, between each other. You notice that the distance between the front edge and the lines in the front are, is larger than the distance between the rear edge and the lines, and this actually uh, gives a more balanced feel. Um, what you also see is that these corners, what well, you can't really see it on the video, but these corners are two millimeters and the rear corners are actually three millimeters. So if you look at this computer in a perspective, you actually um, the, the perspective gets minimized by the larger round of corners. Um, you also notice that this is not a straight corner. It just it doesn't really end. So if you look at it, you get a sort of endless view alongside the case. Another nice feature about these cases is that they kept the easy opening of the Apple II. So you see that it's very easy to remove the top of the case and get inside the computer itself. Another nice feature about this computer is that you can use it both as a tower and as a desktop. You see that these rubber, little rubber blocks, they are removable actually and you can also attach them to the holes that are here on the bottom. Um, interesting thing about this is that actually more people prefer this computer to be used as a tower to put them under a desk uh, instead of a desktop uh, shaped computer. This brings us to the finest example of Snow White design, in my opinion, and this is the Macintosh Quadra. And what you can see is that the text here is actually um, vertically oriented. So what you see on the Macintosh 2C is that the text is still horizontal and here it's vertical. Um, in this computer you can also um, attach the rubber feet 
on the bottom, so you actually turn to a desktop shaped computer. And this is really, in my opinion, is one of the most um, beautiful computer designs uh, ever made. And um, there are a few reasons for this. First of all, it's it's complete lack of clutter. Um, actually, what you see in the Macintosh 2C, you still have these uh, firmware and reset buttons. Um, they're very nicely integrated here. At the bottom, you don't have this, uh, this extra line anymore. Uh, also, what you can see is that the floppy drive opening is is exactly aligned to the snow white lines um, this is actually the power led and the hardest led is located right here um, as i said it's to minimize clutter the um, the lines are actually horizontally um, aligned in the front of the computer and you can see that the orientation between the computers was also meant to be different because here the lines are horizontal um, from the long side of the case, here actually horizontal to the short side of the case. As you can see, all the design elements actually come back in the peripherals as well. If you look at the LED, the power LED of the display, it's the exact same size as the power LED on the Mac Quadra. But this is not just limited to the major, um, the major devices. Look, for example, at the mouse design, even the connector has this snow white design elements with these little lines. Um, you can see that it's also very straightforward and very clean design. And this is the mouse that actually fitted with this setup. And even the keyboards were designed in a Snow White fashion. If you look at the Apple Extended Keyboard version 2, you see the exact same design language. Um, it's the same coloring. Here you have the same size LEDs. You also have the diamond cut Apple logo as well. Apple even used their Snow White design language for smaller peripherals like this external hard disk. The hard disk 20SC. Their external compact disc player. And it also started to be copied by uh, external peripheral suppliers. Like for example, this cutting edge um, external hard drive has style elements of the Snow White design. You see the horizontal lines, you see the vertical lines. Um, it's not as sophisticated as Apple's, but uh, manufacturers started manufacturing external uh, peripherals to match Apple's design, of course, to attract the Apple customers. And even printers were designed to use the uh, Apple Snow White design language, as you can see with this image writer too. You see it has very nice solo buttons. Um, it has the the two millimeter wide lines again. And this is a very nice example of um, Helmut Esslinger's Snow White design is how he meant it. So this is a very typical setup as you could have it in uh, the end of the 80s. Um, this is the Apple Quadra computer, which is a professional grade computer, Apple color display, Apple image writer, and the Apple extended keyboard and the Apple ADB mouse. Um, an interesting detail is that even in the operating system, the Snow White design is represented. As you can see in the title bar, it even features the Snow White design lines. 
Another fine example of the Snow White design is the Macintosh LC, and this is an original model LC. It's the LC1, and you can see that with the flush design, it's almost the same as its early predecessor, the Macintosh Plus. Um, but what you can see is the Macintosh actually didn't get the Snow White design, although uh, Frog Design was hired by Apple to make their designs from 1984, and the original Macintosh is actually from 1984, and the Macintosh didn't get um, the Snow White design because the internal designers at Apple were very proud of their um, Macintosh designs and didn't want, want it to get changed. Um, now, as you can see, this LC is very nice. It has um, its original matching 12-inch uh, monogram monitor. This is uh, an Apple keyboard. It's just called Apple Keyboard by Apple. And uh, again, the Apple desktop mouse. The name LC stands for Low Cost Color. Um, and these were also available with small color displays. And now this is also um, very typical for Apple. They match the design of the screen um, extremely well with the design of the computer. If you look at the side, you see that the frog design uh, made a very nice Snow White design language. You see that the um, adjustment buttons are actually very nicely integrated um, with the screen and you see all the Snow White design lines um, going along the, the display. Uh, this is actually the lowest, the, actually the lowest Macintosh ever made and um, you see that it only has three horizontal lines on the side. Um, the front is not a very typical Snow White design because it's uh, it's curved and you don't see the lines right here. Um, still though, I think it's very well uh, worthy to, to show, especially in contrast to the original Macintosh, um, which had the same shape as this Macintosh Plus. Here you see that the side is completely flush, while well, the side of this Macintosh has the Snow White design um, lines. Also, you see that the floppy drive has a very large opening. Um, this uh, could be used to push the floppy uh, inside the Macintosh. Now, if you look at the Mac LC, it has an uh, automatic insert of the floppy. So, if we insert a floppy disk right here, you don't have to insert it all the way. It just uh, snaps in. And in contrast to the floppy drive in the Macintosh Plus, where you actually had to push it all the way through, like you have to do with PCs. And this gave it an even more clean look. You also see that the floppy drive opening is very nicely integrated with the front of the machine. They kept the easy opening feature of the Apple II. <laughs> <laughs>